Hey yo, what's up everybody? Welcome back to another reaction video. My name is Jesse Kagan and welcome back to another reaction video. And before I even start doing the reaction, because I want to say thank you to everyone who's been subscribing. You guys are super amazing. Thank you for getting us almost to 30,000 subscribers. We're almost getting there very soon. And I know we're going to get there before the end of this year. That's the goal. And yeah, so right about now, we're going to do Allah Miracle Was Sin by Enemy. So without any further ado, guys, let's get it. First and foremost, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions to us, إِذْ تَسْتَغِيثُونَ رَبَّكُمْ فَاسْتَجَابَ لَكُمْ Remember when you called upon your Lord and He answered you. أَنِّي مُمِدُّكُمْ بِأَلْفٍ مِنَ الْمَلَائِكَةِ مُرْدِفِينَ I am going to support you with a thousand angels that will be followed by another thousand angels, the rows of angels that will come. Now here's the thing, if you're in Badr, this is your very first time experiencing what it is like to have that level of hostility, to be that outnumbered on the other side, to have that much more artillery on the other side. It wasn't just being three to one outnumbered, it was also the fact that they had their horses, they had their camels, they had the full equipment of war. The Muslims had one or two horses available in the Battle of Badr to them. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shows them the angels descending upon them. They could actually see the malaika themselves coming down lined up the signs of the angels were all around them and so they outnumbered them the people on the other side and they felt it they felt it from the very beginning they felt the push of the angels they saw the effect of the angels on Quraysh they saw every single moment of the battle that they were not alone that they had divine support that was sent down to be with them now here's the thing couldn't Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have supported them without sending malaika couldn't have, couldn't have been without the angels being visible to them as these things unfolded before them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا جَعَلَهُ اللَّهُ إِلَّا بُشْرَى Allah did not show that to you except as a glad tidings. وَلِطَطْمَئِنَّ بِهِ قُلُوبُكُمْ And so that your hearts could find some ease. It did something for you. It did something for you to be able to see the angels coming down, the miraculous signs that you were not alone on the day of Badr. But at the end of the day, وَمَنْ نَصْرُ إِلَّا مِنْ عِنْدِ اللَّهِ Victory was only from Allah, it wasn't from Jibreel a.s. Victory came from above. Then comes the battle of Uhud. They didn't see angels in the battle of Uhud. And I spoke about this a few days ago, the messaging that came down. وَلَا تَهِنُوا وَلَا تَحْزَنُوا وَأَنْتُمُ الْأَعْلَوْنَ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ مُؤْمِنِينَ Look, you suffered a blow, this hurts. Don't lose heart. Don't grieve. You are still exalted. You are still victorious so long as you retained your belief, so long as you retained your faith, so long as your principles, your purpose remains intact. You are victorious. Now, this last point that I want to get to in the Quran connects to the very first sentiment, and that is Khandaq, the battle of the trench. If there is any moment that resembles what is taking place with our brothers and sisters right now in Gaza, it is Khandaq. It actually is Khandaq. Because it is a time where a tactic was used to specifically starve off Medina, cut all supplies to them, to where even the Prophet ﷺ, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him himself, walks around malnourished. Imagine Jabir ibn Abdullah said, I saw the Prophet ﷺ walking around, he had stones tied to his stomach and he was bloated. Not the bloating after eating, the bloating of starvation. And it was 10,000 on the other side, 10,000 people that surrounded Medina from every direction. And they built this thin trench, only about three miles long. And they are guarding every single point of that trench. They have to utilize every resource. You can't blink an eye. They were under siege for an entire month. Khandaq was a month. And the Meccans cut every single element of food and drink from reaching them in Medina. And so their food was running out. Their water was running out. And they couldn't take breaks. The sleep, the lack of sleep was getting to them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, that that increased them in faith. Hazadahum imana. That actually increased their faith. They were at a point in their spiritual maturity where when people said, look at all the people against you, it increased their faith. Waqalu hasbun Allah wa ni'mal wakil. He said, you know what? Allah is enough for us. And He is the best of protectors. 
And if people say, Inna nasa qad jama'u lakum, look, Palestine is a losing battle. Palestine is not a losing battle. Palestine will win, insha'Allah ta'ala. Palestine will win, Gaza will win, Al-Aqsa will be liberated. We have as much certainty in that as we do when we say, La ilaha illallah Muhammadan Rasulullah, that woman nasru illa min indillah. That victory and help only comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It will win. They will win. When? Allah inna nasullahi qareeb. When Allah wants it to happen. But it will happen. I want to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment and say, I did everything I possibly could to not let them be slaughtered in the dark. Palestine will win insha'Allah ta'ala. Gaza will win insha'Allah ta'ala. Al-Aqsa will be liberated insha'Allah. And we will not let propaganda and the machinery of propaganda with all of its establishments and powers Wow, um, it's a good video to listen to. The narrative was just precise and clear. Again, going back to uh, you know the war between Palestine and uh, Israelites. This kind of war was, I think, was kind of um, already predicted. Some people knew that this war is going to happen. Some people are saying this war was written down and it's, 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 it's coming out on the plain side because it was kind of also scripted and whatnot, you know. There are different kinds of stories out there that are just so crazy at some point. But the whole thing is that uh, for me, I don't want to pick any side, you know. I don't want to say I want to be with the Israelites, I want to be with the Palestine, you know. They really want to solve this thing it's so easy very easy you know just sit down come up with solutions and then just solve it it's as simple as that yes i uh, i get it you know when you look at the israel um when you look at israel some i was listening to some podcasts days days ago and we're talking about how israel was created by the uh the Rothschilds and whatnot, they were the ones who created Israelite, uh, Israel and um, at some point there was, um, you know, Palestine, if you look at the map, that's not how the map used to look like back in the days, you know, if Palestine was actually like, the, the map was kind of stretched and it was big enough, but when you look at it now, it's kind of narrowed down to a point where I mean, the Israelites are taking over or maybe they're trying to just uh, infiltrate in and whatnot. But anyway, so again, when you look, you know who the enemy is and you know who, I mean, you know the protagonist and antagonist, who are they in that picture. But um, you see, what is happening now is, is, is simple, yeah? People are choosing sides and they know in any competition, in any war, you want to choose sides. But again, you don't realize that this is just the only way, or this is just a way of trying to divide us again, okay? They want you to pick sides. And once you pick sides, you tend to believe that these people are right, and you tend to believe that these other people, and the other uh, side, they also tend to believe that they are also right. Just like the way we have religion now, everybody says their their religion is the best religion. Others say their religion is the only religion that is going to be the truth. You see, so it's 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 a way of trying to distract us from the main purpose. You know, when they throw the stone on the other side to make you distracted, just know they don't want you to look that side. That's what I want you to understand. The moment you see something happening right on your face, there must be something that, that is happening somewhere else that your attention is not fully focused there. And whatever is happening is something that um, maybe they don't want us to know or they don't want us to have that understanding of why it's happening. That's why we have this kind of distraction. Yes, it was written down that they're going to be I mean the end times and all those kind of stuff but again I, I you know I like watching and reading and trying to figure out 
trying to ask myself questions and whatnot. The people who came up with these teachings and the writings that we see today in the Bible or in the Quran or in any holy book, are they really true that those things really happened back in the days? And again, was it really scripted down or was it planned out so that it happens exactly the way it's supposed to happen? Because when you look at Revelation, the way it's playing out, it's just the same way we see what is happening now. Is it that they kind of came up with um, a written form of a book to manipulate the entire system, divide and conquer and try to um, manipulate people in believing that it's actually happening because the book says so or it was them who wrote who wrote the entire thing and put it out there for the people to actually read and tend to follow it to the core you know so i i have so many questions regarding the war I, i'm not picking any side to be honest with you guys i'm not picking any side it may god protect everyone who is affected in the war or something like that may the people who come out um, alive be at the front row to be able to um, protect others and show others the best way of of just being together and uniting as a community I don't see why people should fight why are we fighting I know at the end of the day we should have enemies but do we have to fight to prove a point that we are victorious or we are the superior ones? It shouldn't be like that. I believe one time in this world, people never fought. Everything was in harmony and everything was in sy synchronized. And we could synchronize ourselves with so many things. But today, we are all disconnected. We don't even know who we are as people. That's why we are seeing us fighting each other, killing each other with no mercy. And these are the same people who are making us kill each other while they sit on the top and just laugh at us. You know, this is a form of manipulation where they end up uh, harnessing lots of energy from us. And I'm telling you guys, you might think these things are kind of natural, but I feel like it's kind of orchestrated. It's a uh, planned by design yeah so anyway guys just let me know in the comment section what do you think about the, the, the entire what do you think about this video first of all give me your thoughts on the comment section below let me know let's think guys let's 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 have a proper conversation what do you think i i, I like having this crit critical conversation and uh, i like just asking myself questions like why 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 but anyway just let me know in the comment section what do you think and uh, if you haven't subscribed, make sure to hit that subscription button. And don't forget to hit that notification bell if you want to be the first person to watch our videos whenever we post. And without any further ado, guys, I'm going to see you later. And deuces.